Uh, it's uh, Apocalypse Revealed, chapter 11, verse 9. And uh, they of the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations shall see their bodies three days and a half, signifies that when all the who until the end of the present church and the beginning of the new church have been and will be in false cities of doctrine and then in evils of life from faith alone have heard and shall hear of these two essentials which are the acknowledgement of the Lord and of works according to the Decalogue. By peoples and tribes and tongues and nations amend all of the reformed who have been and will be in falsities of doctrine and then and evils of life from faith alone. By peoples I signify those who are in falsities of doctrine. By tribes, falsities and devils of the church. Devils of the church, and uh, by time, confession, and reception thereof, and by nations, those who are nevils of life, and therefore, by these four, uh, signified all and everyone who have been and who will be such. Thus, all they who have been. In that great city and they that are like unto them who will dance uh, forth what is then dance 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 forth dance forth dance forth dance forth dance forth yo Thenceforth. Yeah, hello. What what are you reading? Uh, it's uh, Apocalypse Revealed by Manuel Swedenborg book. Emmanuel Apocalypse. Sweden oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, this book. <clears throat> Apocalypse Revealed. It is uh philosophy. Uh he, he was a philosopher, yes, and uh, uh, this book is about uh, spiritual meaning of uh, the book of Revelation of the Bible. Mm. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Go on, go on. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to read, you can read next verse after me. We read verse by verse here. Actually, I, I'm learning English from this book. Oh, good, good. Uh, and I'm, I tried. I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, and I try to understand his point of view because Swedenborg is a very smart and wise person, and his books are uh, mm -hmm. very smart and wise. Because I believe that if I will read a smart and wise books, I will be more smart and wise. Mm -hmm. And it's about new church. Mm -hmm. I signifies the two essentials of the new church above mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, by the... Uh, where did I stop? Sorry. It's a great... Okay, once again. All and everyone... All signified all and everyone who have been and who will be such, thus all they who have been in that great city and they that are like unto them who will thenceforth 
thenceforth is like is like from now thenceforth 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 like from now then thenceforth come they are out of the world by their bodies or those of the two witnesses are signified the two essentials of the new church above mentioned by they shall see signified when they have heard and shall hear of them because to see is said of their bodies and to hear of these two essentials by three days and a half is signified to the end and the beginning that is to the end of the present church and the beginning of the new now from these things collected into one sense it is evident that by these words they of the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations shall see their bodies three days and a half the things above mentioned are signified in the spiritual sense the reason why three days and a half signify to the end and the beginning is because day signifies state the number three what is complete to the end and the half the beginning or the same is signified by three days and a half as by week six days of which signify what is complete to the end and the seventh day signifies what is holy or the number three how to say three <clears throat> is Maybe you can see. Three, one half. Three, one half. Ah, three, one half. The number three, one half <coughs> is half of the number seven. Ah, three, one half is half of the number seven, which makes a big and a double number and the divided number of which it consists have a similar signification. The three signifies what is complete, thus to the end may be seen from these passages in the word that Isaiah walked naked and bare off three years. Jehovah called Samuel three times and Samuel ran three times to Eli, maybe Eli. To Eli, yeah, to Eli, and the third time Eli understood. Elijah, uh, it was First Samuel 3, Elijah stretched himself three times over the widow's son, First King 17. Elijah commanded them to pour water upon the burnt offering three times, First Kings 18. Jesus said, the kingdom of the heavens is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures till the whole was leavened. Leavened is like about east, yeah, east. Yeah, east. Leaven. Leaven and yeast. 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 <coughs> <coughs> Took and hid in three measures till the whole was leavened. Jesus sent unto Peter that he would deny him three times. Matthew 30, 26. The Lord asked Peter three times, Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. Jonah 1, 17. Jesus said the temple would be destroyed and he would build it up again in three days. Matthew 26. Jesus prayed three times in Jess, Jess, Semain, Jethemain, Jethemain. How to pronounce it? Getsman. 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 
I think it's like jet Jessamine. Matthew 26. Jesus rose again in the third day, Matthew 28. Besides many others, as in Isaiah, Hosea, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, to the end, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Samuel, Sam, uh, Daniel, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Daniel, Mark, Luke. Seven as well as three signifies what is full and complete, but seven is set of things holy, and three of things not holy. And shall not suffer their bodies to be put into mon <coughs> monuments, monument, how to say it, monuments, I think, monuments. Monuments. Mm -hmm. Monuments, monuments. Okay, monuments is monuments. Into monuments signifies that they condemned and will condemn them. By bodies are here signified the two essentials of the new church, of which and above, and by not suffering them to be put into monuments is signified to reject them as condemned. This is signified because by being put into monuments or buried is signified resurrection and continuation of life. For then those things are committed to the earth which are from the earth, thus which are earthly and thence unclean. Therefore, by not being put into monuments or not being buried is uh, signified to continue in things earthly and unclean. And for that reason, to be rejected as condemned. It was on this account that in the church with the sons of Israel, which was a representative church, it was in instituted that they who were considered as condemned should be cast forth and not buried as is evident from these things thus saith jehovah concerning them they shall die of grievous deaths death 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 they shall not be Lamented, 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 La lament, I think, lamented. Lamented. Mm -hmm. Lamented, <clears throat> like mourned. They shall, they shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried. They shall be as down upon the face of the earth, and their carcasses shall be for food to the birds of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth. Jeremiah 16. The prophets that prophesy lies shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. None bearing. Jeremiah uh, 14, 16. In the day they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets out of the sepulchre, sepulchres, sepulchres. They shall not be collected, not buried. They shall not be done upon the face of the earth. Jeremiah 8. That the dog devoured Jezebel in the field non barren barren two kings barren barren how to pronounce barren i think i am correct burying ah barren barren uh non barren barren buried buried barren <coughs> first king nine Thou wast cast out of thy sepulchre like an abominable shoot, as a carcass trodden under feet. Isaiah 14, 19. Besides other places, as in Jeremiah, 2 Kings, mm -hmm. verse 10. <clears throat> and they that dwell upon the earth 
shall rejoice over them and be glad signifies the delight of the affection of the heart and the soul in the church on that account among those who were in faith alone as to doctrine and life by them that dwell on the earth amend they who are in the church in the present case they who are in the church where faith alone prevails the earth signifies the church in which they are to rejoice and be glad signifies to have the delight of the affection of the heart and soul the delight of the affection of the heart is of the will and the delight of the affection of the soul is of the understanding for in the word by heart and soul i meant man's will and understanding <clears throat> Hence it is that it is said to rejoice and be glad. Although joy and gladness seem to be one thing, yet in these two expressions, there is the marriage of the will and the understanding, which also is the marriage of good and uh, truth, which exists in the whole and uh, in every particular of the world, as is shown in the doctrine on the New Jerusalem concerning the sacred scripture. This is the reason why both these expressions, to rejoice and be glad and joy and gladness, frequently occur in other parts of the world, as in these passages. <clears throat> Behold, joy and gladness, healing and ox, Isaiah 22. Joy and gladness are cut off from the house of our God. Joel 1, 16. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness shall cease. Jeremiah 7. The fast of the tenth shall be for joy and gladness. Zechariah 9, 19. Uh, Zechariah 8, 19. Rejoice ye in Jerusalem, and ye glad in her. Isaiah 66. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Lamentations 4. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Psalms 1996. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Psalms 51, 8. Joy and gladness shall be found in Zion. Isaiah 51. Actually, in this sense, it's about joy and gladness. Yeah, joy, because we, we see these two words and we should understand the difference, what is joy and gladness. What, what is the difference? What is the difference between them? What's the distinguish, distinction between, of them? Joy and gladness shall be found in Zion. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be gladness, many shall rejoice at his birth. Mm -hmm. In here, make me to hear. Sorry, what? Do you understand it? Thou shalt have gladness. Do you understand what it, what it's the translation of it? Do you understand old English? <laughs> like Swedenborg, work, I've been. Uh, bro, do you actually know? You know me. You know me. I've been in one of the of your sessions when we were reading this one. So yeah, I've been here. So I guess you've learned a lot of words from yeah. Do you understand now, like the old English, maybe more? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm learning uh, modern English and old English and old old English. And if I don't know any word, I can translate it from this application because. Uh, joy and gladness it's it's not like old english it's it's modern words uh yeah, that's but this should... one like th thou shalt have gladness can you translate it then all right if you know uh thou it's like uh, you sh you will have gladness exactly all right yeah well, that's one you have to know yep okay. uh, yeah because thou it's about uh, god it's like it's like uh, it's about uh, religious uh, person like god and he who represents 
represents God, yeah, because thy, because when we say mm -hmm. thy, it's about God, yeah. For example, yeah. thy will, thy will, thou shalt have gladness. Mm -hmm. Thou, I, yeah. <coughs> Oh. What's the what's the difference? Do you see if if uh, if we see two words like two similar words in uh, in the Bible? Well, for example, Isaiah fifty one, here joy and gladness. Why um, why uh, I, uh, do I does Isaiah use these two wor similar words like jo joy and gladness? And we should understand the distinction of them yeah like why, why don't we see one word only one word like gladness or maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a maybe there's a tendency in english you know to you know uh exaggerate a little you know to use uh, synonyms mostly you know i've been i actually noticed it myself so i don't know maybe it comes down to like uh one word being less expressive than the other one so they just add that synonym, so it makes it look, uh, you know, more exaggerated. I don't know, you know, maybe, yeah, it, it gives us another, it looks at it from another point of view. But, I mean, like, the same translation, but slightly stronger. Uh, like, the difference in, in like, <clears throat> the difference is in... And impressions of those two ones, you know, one is more expressive and impressive as well than the other one. I don't know. Joy and gladness shall be uh, found. Joy and uh, gladness. For example, yeah. For example, we can imagine any situations. For example, you can say, "Yesterday, I had a great joy," uh, or you can say, "Yesterday, I had." A great gladness. It's like the same thing. <laughs> I mean, Joy. in Russian, you, obviously, in Russian, you can do this. In Russian, you can do this. Otherwise, it's going to be grammatical, incorrect, grammatically incorrect in Russian. In Russian, we don't use this, yeah, as you know. But in English, I don't know. In English, maybe. I mean, they're allowed. English is. Um, I mean, you, you can use it in English. So yeah, and there's no restriction. <laughs> uh, I mean. Swedenborg writes, if you see uh, this pair, like, with similar meanings, it's like we, mm, one word uh, belongs to the truth, and uh, another word belongs to charity, like, to belongs to, corresponds to charity or mercy. For example, joy, for example, do you see, for example, I can say, I feel joy, I feel joy in this conversation and in reading this book uh, i feel joy and it's about um, the truth because i can see the truth and i feel joy but if i if i feel good because uh, good uh, uh, follows from my understanding of the truth because if i know the truth i feel good and uh, it means if I if I feel good, I can say I feel gladness because gladness is it is about good, uh, yeah. Because it's about uh, mercy and charity. Because truth is like uh, truth; it's what is correct, what is right. But gladness is is about what is good. Can you say so? Yeah, maybe <laughs> that because we uh, these words like uh, make one uh, whole thing like um, that because every everything in this world be belong to truth and uh, charity like from god because god gives us his truth and his uh, charity his mercy and that because when we feel joy it means we understand the truth and we are happy yeah because uh, no nobody wants to be deceived but if you if you know the truth you 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 know uh you you know what is uh correct what is right and you can see the light of life and you can see your way and you can walk it means you feel joy on that way but if you feel good like uh, you're happy and you feel good from god because uh, god is like our son uh, our son gives us 
he it's uh, light and it's warm warm and uh, uh -huh. the light of our sun belongs to the truth but the warmth of our sun belongs to the good like mercy and you can say that joy belongs to the truth and gladness belongs to <laughs> mercy that because we need to use these two words <laughs> together can you, say, Maybe, yeah. you agree <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't i have nothing to say about this actually you know i'm not i've got no expertise in, you know but i i, I know for sure good is from god so yeah <laughs> goodbye for instance as you say goodbye it's god bye you know it's god uh... Yeah, mm -hmm. because they see everywhere. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah, I have nothing to say about this except that you know, mm -hmm. as I said, good belongs to God, or glad belongs to God as well. I don't know. I don't yeah, know for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you see, for example, in this sense, in this sense passage, let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad <laughs> be glad yeah do you see because uh, it's about uh, rejoice and rejoice is about joy yeah because let the heavens rejoice like mm -hmm. mm, and but if it if because heaven is heavens is what is about but if you talk about the earth uh, it, it's about gladness yeah because we, we say let the heavens rejoice but and the earth be glad <laughs> Ah, yeah. I get it. I get it now. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah. All right, let's move on. Yeah, and in this in this uh, sentence, they see it's, it's uh, Psalms uh, 51. Make me to hear joy and gladness. And and glad. And glad. And glad. <laughs> yeah, joy and glad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe but, it just gives different meanings, you know, maybe, yeah, or actually, uh, maybe there's something more to heaven, you know, like a joy and gladness is a little more, a little, slightly less than that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, pleasure, happiness. Yeah, do you see joy? It's like pleasure, happiness, fun, delight, comfort. Maybe it's, it, maybe it's religious context. In religious context, the same words mean slightly different things you know maybe one is a little over you know uh the fence and another one is uh, slightly how should i say l i mean less impressionate Imp impressive word i don't know i mean one word has like a huge effect to like heaven it's it's, it's the fact that joy is actually it's something like uh more than just gladness so heaven rejoices you know so uh, or if it's just yeah or if in this context is as a different uh mm, connotation i don't know yeah for, like, for example if you if you win a prize prize uh, and you are a winner in um, and you you got that prize would you feel uh, joy or gladness? What can what could you say about yourself? Uh, oh, if, if... So if if I'm gonna say if I'm gonna say I feel joy, is that I'm 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 in heaven. I, I I feel like I'm in heaven. You know, that that's when I'm gonna use joy. But glad is in another context, another yeah, mm -hmm. another situation. So like uh, I can be glad, glad that you know, uh, the the sky is calm, you know, above me. So I can feel glad because I feel some connection to God because God made the sky, you know, uh, clean and pure and, you know, calm. But when I'm going to say joy, um, I'm right beside the God. You know, like, I'm, I'm in heaven. You know, I'm I'm on top of the world, as they say. So, yeah, I mean, we, we have, yeah, we get it. So, yeah, let's move on. I don't know. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, is it just Psalms that you're reading right now or have you read the whole... Or is it is it that is it the book that you were reading? Uh, yeah, Swedenborg. Swedenborg. He 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 tries to explain us the meaning of joy and gladness, because uh, because do you see, uh, this is this is uh, he writes this is the reason why both these expressions 
uh, like the expressions is like these words. Uh, he writes, this is the reason why both these expressions to rejoice and be glad yeah. and joy and gladness frequently occur in other parts of the world um, as in these passages. But he writes about mm -hmm, here, here we can see. Mm -hmm. This is about verse 10. And they and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and be glad. They see and be glad. For example, if you if you meet your friend, you can say, I'm so glad or I am very glad to see you. Like I'm very glad to meet you, yeah. And you you you, you, you uh, but it's not about joy joy, yeah, but it's about it's not about your rejoicing but it's about your gladness you can say i'm i'm very glad to meet you here yeah for example uh -huh. mm, and and it tries uh, you know, he writes signifies the delight of the affection of the heart and the soul in the church on that account among those who were in faith alone as to doctrine and life but then the dwell on the earth i meant they who are in the church in the present case they who are in the church were where faith alone prevails the earth signifies the church in which they are to rejoice and be glad signifies to have the delight of the affection of the heart okay to rejoice and be glad signifies to have the delight of the affection of the heart and soul the delight of the affection of the heart is of the will and the delight of the affection of the soul is of the understanding ah okay uh it, it means like uh, joy mm, re to rejoice belongs to uh, the will i the think will, exactly the justice will mm. uh-huh and, and the, what is this understanding mm. yeah and gladness belongs to understanding for example if you understand any any um, knowledge like this uh, any uh, if you understand something, you you can say that I feel, uh, I feel gladness, yeah, like delight. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, right, let's move on. All right, can I read? Can I read some of those? Do you want to read? Sure. Yeah, some of the yeah. yeah, some of the script. Can I? But someone is chattering here. Who is chattering here? But uh, someone came yeah. here to chat. Uh, Not someone. They're listening to something. They're listening to something. You know. Mm -hmm. okay. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe, Let me. May, maybe I can. It's like. Uh, all right don't pay attention don't pay attention all right it's not gonna it, it, i mean it's not gonna distract you it's not that big of a deal so yeah all right let's move on it's not gonna make a difference no hold on do you feel distracted by you know there's noise or what we can still it's a... It's Victor, Jean, Jean Victor. Can you mute your yeah, microphone? It's me. Because uh, because there there's some bright uh, uh, in the background. Yeah, yeah, the noise. Okay, bro. sorry, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. One second. Think. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do Do you want to read? Yeah. Or yeah. Where do we start off? Where, where do we start? Where do we start? From From the top, you can you can you can read. Uh... No, 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 no. All right. Can we like you've already read it? Let's do it, like next once mm -hmm. you you've already read this. Yeah, I guess. Let's read. All right, go to the next page. Mm -hmm, okay. Let, 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 let's finish this one. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding for in the word by heart and soul, 
heart and soul, a man, man's will and understanding. Okay, do you see, if you, if you say about heart, it's about uh, my will, because I can say my heart. My heart is, is, my, is, is about my will. If I mean, mean my will, I say my heart, but if I say about my soul, I mean my understanding. Mm -hmm. Understand. Hence it is that it is said to rejoice and be glad, although joy and gladness seem to be one thing. Ah, do you see, it's uh, like uh, joy and gladness seem to be one thing. Yet in these two expressions, there is the marriage of the will and the understanding. Because do, do you see, it's it's like I understand it like your understand your your understanding uh, should what what should ought to correspond to your will. It's like mm -hmm. your understanding exactly. ought to correspond exactly. to your will. Because if if your understanding doesn't correspond to your will. It's like you, you cannot do something because you don't understand and you, or you can understand that, but you don't have the will to do that. <laughs> but if you want to do something like to build your house, for example, you to do your work, uh, you should have the understanding about how can you do that. And you should have your will to do that. Yeah. Like. You, you you need to have these two things, like your will and the understanding, like plan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So which? It's about marriage. Also... You see, marriage, marriage is about conjunction. Yeah, because he writes there is the marriage of the will and the understanding. Because okay. the meaning of marriage is like conjunction when two became one. Yeah, like uh, um, okay. Okay. Uh, bridegroom and bride. Uh, after marriage, uh, they became one, <laughs> like uh, one family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. That's good and true. Mm -hmm. Okay, next page, which exists in the whole and in every particular of the word, as is shown in the doctrine of the New Jerusalem concerning the sacred scripture. This is the reason why both these expressions, to rejoice and be glad and joy and gladness, frequently occur in other parts of the word, as in these passages. Yeah, because joy it is about will, yeah, and gladness it is about uh, understanding. Yeah, understanding. And everywhere we read, behold, for example, Isaiah 22, mm, behold, joy and gladness killing an, an ox. Joy and gladness are cut off from the house of our God. Joy one, joy and gladness are cut off. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness shall cease. Jeremiah 7. Mm -hmm. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness. Mm -hmm. The fast of the tenth shall be for joy and gladness. Zechariah 9. Rejoice ye in Jerusalem, be ye glad in her. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Uh, Lamentations 4. Let the heavens rejoice. You see, it, it means like we are like translators. If you want to mm -hmm. uh, to read and to understand the Bible, we should uh, understand the connotation of these words and we should remember the meaning of uh, uh, these words we want to translate uh, from other passages and we should use most uh, similar, most... Uh, um, useful uh, meaning of that word for example in in this uh, passage like psalms 96 it says let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad mm -hmm. okay the heavens it's mm -hmm. about rejoice and the earth be glad mm -hmm. make make me to hear joy and gladness uh -huh. make me to hear joy you, you don't say make, make, make me to hear only joy but you 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 ask god it's about your asking uh to god make me to hear joy and gladness because it's not enough for you to hear only joy or only gladness you 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 want to hear them both <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh, exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> Joy and gladness shall be found in Zion. Mm -hmm. Zion, it's like a mount of Zion where God lives. 
God lives on the Mount of Zion. And it's about New Jerusalem because uh, New Jer uh, Jerusalem is on the Mount of Zion and uh, New Jerusalem is uh, on the Mount of Zion too because it's a heavenly Jerusalem. And there, there are joint gladness. Mm -hmm. They, uh, joint gladness can be found in Zion. Mm -hmm. So, guys. Hello. Mm -hmm. What are we doing today? Uh, we are reading the book you can see on the stream. And we try to understand the meaning of joy and gladness in these passages, <laughs> in this sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the book about? I like to read philosophy uh, also. It's about Apocalypse Revealed. It's uh, the, bo the book is Apocalypse Revealed. It's about uh, heaven and hell. Oh, uh, it's like related to Christianity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Are it's about like spiritual, it? spirit, spiritual meaning of the book of Revelation of the Bible. Uh, right. And if you want to read, you can read uh, in your turn. You can read next uh, verse. That's great. I'll improve my reading skills. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have gladness. Many shall rejoice at his birth. birth. Look one. Uh -huh. it, about, it is about birth of Jesus Christ. Um, when angel Gabriel came down to Mary and he said God's words to her, and it's about, and he said, Thou shalt have gladness, many shall rejoice at his birth. birth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have gladness. People will have gladness and they shall rejoice. Mm -hmm. Then we like cause to cease the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Jeremiah 7, 34. Let all that seek thee rejoice and be glad. Mm -hmm. But let the just be glad and rejoice in gladness. But let the just be glad and to, like just um, who, who is the just like it is about um, the one who is just yeah let let the just or about or it is about justice okay, let just, the just be glad I, I believe just is true and correct this is what we call just just is true. Mm -hmm. I, I think just is about justice, yeah, because uh, just it's about uh, just is about right. right, righteousness. Yeah, righteousness, correct. Mm -hmm. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's about ju justice and just. Uh, let the just ah, the just is he who is just. Yeah, <laughs> he just who is, is like... just. He, he, mm -hmm. Just as a person who is doing good things, is it like good mm -hmm. in whatever the situation is, person who is just. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about person, yeah, because there, article there before, yeah. Let yeah. the just be glad. Let 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 him like let him be ju glad and rejoice, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Be glad in Jerusalem. Rejoice for joy with her. Mm -hmm. Be glad in Jerusalem. Rejoice for joy with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who wanted to read? Ah, he, he left. Uh -huh. Okay, you, you, you can read from this if you, if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. And shall send gifts one to another signifies consideration. I'm sorry, conciliation through Consociation, what is this, consociation? Consociation. It's about society, consociation. It's, you see, it's from society, like... Consociation? Yeah, it's like to... Consociation. Consociation is like conjunction into one society like uh, association well, ah, it's like a 
marriage between love and friendship this uh, signifies consociation through love and fresh friendship like conjunction love and friendship mm -hmm. like consociation through love and friendship to send gifts signifies to be consociated by love and friendship because a gift consociate for it to produce love and cause friendship one to another signifies mutually because these two perhaps tormented that dwell upon I cannot read it because my name is on the the earth signif ah uh, yeah can, can you see yeah yes I can mm -hmm. see now dwell upon the next page mm -hmm. please earth signifies that these two essential one concern concerning the Lord and concerning the divine human and the other concerning a life according to the common commandments of the Command, com commandments command commandments of the how do you spell this i mean how do you pronounce this decalogue 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 is Ten Commandments, like it's the law of Moses. Decalogue. 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 It's like... Mm -hmm. I contrary to essential, essentials received in Church of the Reform, one of which relates to Trinity of person and the other to faith alone being saving without the works of the law and that by reason of the contrary those two essentials of the new church which is the new Jer Jerusalem are held in contempt dislike and adversion that is that this is what is signified when by the two prophets or witnesses are meant the two essentials of new church and then by them that dwell upon the earth are men they who are in the two essential of the church of the reformed follow as necessary consequences by tormenting and signified to be held in contempt disliked and mm, aversion what is aversion Aversion. Aversion. It's like dislike. Aversion. Okay. A rejection. All right. Rejection. Aversion. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll, this is the last dislike. part. Dislike. Mm -hmm. You 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 can read. Uh, you can read uh, this page. Dislike and aversion, and this is next verse. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can read ne the next verse. Okay. And I will and I and I will read twelve next verse twelve. Mm -hmm. It's eleven verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Should I read from verse eleven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go go ahead. Mm -hmm. And after three days and half, the spirit of life of God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. Signified that these two essentials of the new church at the end of the former. When the new church is beginning and progress progressing are very vivified by the Lord and those who receive them by three days and a half is signified to the end and the beginning. Well, that was great. And follow me. Verse eleven. And after three days and a half, 
the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet signifies that these two essentials of the new church Uh, uh, at the end of the former, when the new church is beginning and progressing, be fight by the Lord with those who re receive them. By three days and a half, as signified to the end and the beginning, uh, thus, from the end of the present church, to the beginning of the new, in this case, with those among whom the new church begins and progresses. Because it is now said of the witnesses that the spirit of life entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. By the spirit of life from God is signified spiritual life, and by standing upon their feet is signified natural life agreeing with spiritual life, and thus vivification from the Lord. The reason why this is signified is because by the spirit of life is meant the internal of man, which is called the internal man. Internal man, which considered in itself is spiritual. For the spirit of man thinks and wills, and uh, to think and will in itself is spiritual. By standing upon their feet is signified the external of man, which is called the external man which is in itself natural. For the body speaks and acts what, is, what its spirit thinks and wills, and to speak and to act is natural. That feet signify things natural, may be seen. What is specifically meant by this expression shall be explained. Every man who is reformed is first reformed as to the internal man, and afterwards as to the external. The internal man is not reformed by merely knowing and understanding the truths and goods by which man is saved. Hey, Sorry, what? Hello. I'm reading the book. You can see on the stream. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want to read, you can read next uh, verse after me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not here for learning English. I'm just um, chilling, you know. So uh, I hope you enjoy your class, guys. I don't know what you are doing. Anyway, have a nice day. See ya. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. See ya. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Bye. But by willing and loving them, mm -hmm. once again, the the internal man is not reformed by merely knowing and understanding the truths and goods by which man is saved, but by willing and loving them, but the external man, by speaking and doing the things which the internal man wills and loves, and in proportion as this takes place, in the same proportion man is regenerated. The reason why he is not regenerated before us because his internal is not before in the effect, but only in the cause. And unless the cause be in the effect, it is disappeared, dis di di dissipated. 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 Mm -hmm. It's like scattered. Mm-hmm, scattered, dispersed, dispelled, mm -hmm. dissipated. It is like a house built upon ice, which sinks to the, to the bottom when the ice is melted by the sun. In a word, it is like a man without feet to stand and walk upon. Mm-hmm. It is the same with the internal or spiritual man if it is not founded on the external or natural man. Such then is the signification of the two 
witnesses standing upon their feet after the Spirit from God entered into them, and also of similar expressions in Ezekiel. Jehovah said unto me, Prophesy unto wind, unto the wind. Jehovah said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. And when I prophesied, the Spirit entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. In the same, a voice speaking unto me said, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. And the Spirit entered into me and stood me upon my feet. And in the same, I fell on my face, then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And this is what is meant also by the Lord's words to Peter. Peter said, Thou shalt not wash my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he that is washed needeth, needeth to save to wash his feet, and the whole is clean. John 13. Mm -hmm. And the whole is clean. And great fear fell upon them that saw them, signifies commotion of mind and consternation at divine truths. Consternation. Consternation. It's like horror, fright. Mm -hmm. Amazement, stupor. 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 Mm -hmm. Consternation. 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 A divine truth. Fear has various significations according to the things which causes it. Fear, great fear, signifies commotion of mind and consternation. Consternation. A divine truth. For divine truths have these effects to the evil, for they terrify them when at the same time they hear of hell and eternal damnation. But the terror soon vanishes together with the faith that there isn't any life after death. Okay, that's all today.